The last new thing we need to learn for Newton's second law is friction. And friction can apply to either the first or second law, um, but we're going to just look at it kind of as its own separate thing. So this is the last new thing before the test. You do have these notes, it's only a couple of bullet points, and then I'll do um, two examples. So you do have these notes in your packet, it's right after worksheet four. So let's go through this and then I'll do the examples and then that's all the new things that you need to learn from here until the test. It'll just be a whole bunch of practice synthesizing everything. The two main types of friction are kinetic friction and static friction. So kinetic by nature just means moving and kinetic friction is the type of friction exerted on one surface by another when the two surfaces rub against each other because one or both of them are moving. So in other words, kinetic friction is what occurs when they're sliding. You might see, oops, you might see the symbol for kinetic friction sometimes be F K, uh, it's a lowercase cursive K, or you might also see F F K. Um, I'm okay if you just put F F for friction, but if you want to designate between static or kinetic, you can do that. And then the next type of friction is static friction. So static means not moving. And this is the friction you have when there is no motion between two surfaces. So static friction is what keeps an object from moving. And this is especially prevalent on inclines. If a surface is inclined and an object is not moving, that's static friction, keeping it not moving. And again, just like kinetic friction, you might also have the symbols FS or FFS denoting static friction if you see that anywhere. Again, I won't be picky if you just want to keep it as FF. And the last thing we have for friction is the coefficient of friction. This is the amount of resistance an object encounters in moving over another. So what coefficient of friction depends on is the surface itself. If you have a rough surface, you're going to have a high coefficient of friction. If you have a very smooth surface, such as ice, it's going to be a low coefficient of friction. Most of these are less than 1. It is possible to have a coefficient of friction greater than 1, but very, very rare. So most coefficients of friction are less than 1, and the lower or the closer to 0, the less friction there's going to be. The coefficient of friction is unitless because it's a ratio, and we'll see what that ratio is in a minute. The symbol for the coefficient of friction is the Greek letter mu. So it's spelled M-U. It's kind of a mix of an M and a U, but it's a lowercase Greek letter mu. And the equation for friction is frictional force equals mu Fn. where FF is the friction force mu is the coefficient of friction and FN is the normal force now I did say that the coefficient of friction is a ratio here's the reason it's a ratio so if we look at the equation FF equals mu FN, if you're looking for mu, mu equals the frictional force over the normal force. So mu is a ratio of frictional force to normal force, and that's why it is unitless, because those two units of Newton over Newton would cancel out. You might also see in terms of the symbol for coefficient of friction. If it's static friction, you might see mu s. If it's kinetic friction, you might see mu k. So if you ever see mu s or mu k, it's telling you what type of friction that is. Okay, I said we we're going to do two examples, so I'm going to start with example number one. It tells us that a 15 kilogram backpack dragged across the floor has 37 newtons of friction. We want to draw a force diagram and determine the coefficient of friction. So it doesn't tell us whether or not it is accelerating. Um, that's unknown. But what we can do is just draw a picture first showing that this is being dragged across the floor. 
And because it's not telling us whether or not it's accelerating, let's just assume that it's constant velocity. So drawing the force diagram for this, you're going to have weight going down, equal normal force going up because it's not accelerating. Let's say it's being dragged across by a tension force going to the right, and then we're going to have an equal that should have been a little bit shorter, frictional force to the left. The problem tells us that the friction is 37 newtons and that the mass is 15 kilograms. So let's just let's a given fine for this. We know that frictional force is 37 newtons and we know that mass is 15 kilograms. And we want to find mu. So we know the mass, therefore we can find the weight. Weight is just mass times 9.8, so 15 times 9.8 means that my weight is 147 newtons. That's equal to my normal force, which is 147 newtons. And the only thing left now to find is the coefficient of friction. So frictional force equals mu Fn. Mu equals frictional force over normal force. So mu equals 37 newtons divided by 147 newtons. 37 divided by 147 is 0 0.2517 keeps on going. Again, mu is unitless. Two sig figs, so mu is about equal to 0 0.25. Pretty simple. Um, I'm going to do one more example, and it's going to be number four and five since it's pretty much one problem. Okay, so here I'm going to combine numbers four and five. It tells us in four to find the net force of a four kilogram box being pulled horizontally with a tension force of 100 newtons and a coefficient of friction of 0 0.2, and then five is asking for the acceleration of that box. So first we're going to draw a diagram, and this one we know is accelerating, so it's being pulled to the right and getting faster, the way I drew my diagram. Next thing I'm going to do is list the given find. We know that the mass of the box is 4 kilograms. We know that the tension is 100 newtons, and the coefficient of friction is 0 0.2. It's asking us to find in number four the net force, and in number five we're looking for acceleration. Starting with the force diagram for the box, we've got normal going up, an equal gravitational force going down, again it's not accelerating in the y direction, a tension force going to the right, which is longer than the frictional force going to the left. We know that the tension force is 100 newtons. We're given mass so we can easily figure out the weight, 4 times 9.8. The weight is 39.2 newtons. And the normal force is also 39.2 newtons. We can't find the net force until we know frictional force, but given the coefficient of friction and now that we have the normal force, we can get friction. So FF equals mu FN, so this is 0 0.2 times 39.2 newtons. So my frictional force is equal to 7.84 newtons. From the force diagram, I know that net force is equal to right minus left. So F net equals FT minus FF, which is 100 newtons minus 7.84 newtons. So my net force equals 92.16 newtons. I'm out of room. I'm going to go to the next. This is only one sig fig, so F net is approximately 90 newtons. And then for number five, we're looking for acceleration. We know that acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. 
So we're going to use our unrounded net force, 92.16 newtons, divided by 4 kilograms. Our acceleration is equal to 23.04 meters per second squared. So one fig, sig fig acceleration is about 20 meters per second squared. So those are two examples. If you want to do numbers two and three, go ahead. I will have the answers if you want to check those. Otherwise, we're going to be doing practice in class tomorrow with the simpler problems, and then they'll start getting a little bit more complex.